Hello and welcome once again to Cover to Cover, a verse by verse study through the Bible. We are going uh, through the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And we've just started, we are in Genesis, a very, very interesting and a foundational book telling us a lot of things. That's why we've been going slowly by slowly. There, there are some points where we'll move a little bit faster, but because we are still dealing with foundational issues, we are just uh, spending time to understand, um, to try to answer some of the most basic questions about life. Like, where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going to after this? What is a uh, with the purpose behind all this. Why is the world the way it is today? We are answering questions about origin. Where did the, the sin come from? And what is the effect or the significance of sin? Why are people dying? So many questions that are answered. Why is the world the way it is today? The, what science is observing? The, the, the continents drift apart. A lot of water in the world, unlike any other any other planet, no other planet is known to have uh, water uh, to, to sustain life only on earth. And there are so many questions that uh, the Bible is answering, and especially in Genesis, it's a foundational book. And every person is alive today who wants to understand life, needs to understand the Bible, and especially the book of Genesis. So we are going through one of the most spectacular stories, that is the story of the global flood. Was there really flood that covered the whole world? Wow. Well, yes, the evidence is there, overwhelming, there are a lot of evidence that indeed there was a, a flood. And the flood, it was not a local thing. It covered the whole world. The highest mountain, of course not Mount Everest, the mountain, this, uh, the, they are mountains that came to be during, after the flood. The Bible say, as we saw last time, that God rebuked the water. Uh, that's at the end of the flood. And the, the Bible says the water uh, fled and uh, the mountains rose. As the mountains rose, the valleys were formed, water went to the valley, and uh, that's how we have the tall mountains today. But the, the mountains that existed then were covered completely. Not single land dwelling life was left. God destroyed everybody and everything. And uh, I believe had God not done that, it would have been a very chaotic world today. Things were very crazy. The Bible says the earth was full of violence and we had uh, demonic uh, interaction even sexually between man and, and the demons, the fallen angels. And it became just a very sorry state. And by the way, the, the, the idea of giants being in the land then, this is the result of this interaction between demons and man. It resulted into giants. And this a lot of uh, archaeological discoveries that are really baffling scientists and archaeologists. They are looking, for example, ancient civilization, and they're really wondering, was really this a stone-aged primitive man? They look at some of the big things that have, uh, are, 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 are being discovered, like big pots that, that you cannot even carry, and you wonder who brought them there and who made them, what were they for, who could use them. Things that we cannot use today, a normal human being cannot use it. You know, they look at these buildings, the constructions, the stones, and they are big stones that have been cut and lifted, transported very far from their source, and they, they've been made to construct the, these things. And they're wondering which technology did they use? Because they never had cranes, we know they, 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 they didn't have any machinery to carry this kind of thing, they didn't have machinery or, or, or the, the things to cut uh, through the rock, the granite. How do you cut through the granite in a very smooth way to make this kind of constructions? So these are the, the discoveries that have baffled scientists uh, for many years. That there must have been some ancient, they say, it is a lost civilization. Some ancient civilization that's lost. Yeah, I agree with them. It was lost during the time of the flood. And also human history. There's a lot of historical um, things that people are able to, 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 to find, except during the time, uh, about the same time when the flood is believed to have happened. That's why we have a lot of information missing. 
So we are talking about historical facts. It's not a myth. It's not some made up stories. These are really historical facts. And uh, you see, for example, the way Chinese they write the word boat, you know, it has uh, three components vessel, it has the, the number eight, and then it has the mouth or people that they designate people with the mouth. So uh, when you look at the word uh, boat in, in China, it, it just says eight people in a vessel. And these are very old language. They didn't just make this, make this up after reading the Bible. They had this before even the Bible was compiled. So you see, it is a confirmation that these things happen. And we have many, many other cultures, hundreds of, of uh, civilizations that are uh, uh, having the same stories that are consistent with what is in the Bible, especially the story of the flood. It covered the entire, entire world, a global flood it was. So that's what we were looking at last time. And uh, we said to look at life after the flood, how now uh, Noah and his sons are being introduced to a new world, a new world that we now just understand by observational science today. We study and we see just what the flood did. It is unbelievable. If you just study science, study geology, study archaeology, look at a lot of things that you're going to see that will just baffle you. And uh, last time we were talking about fossils, billions of things buried, dead organisms. We know if something dies, uh, it should decompose very fast. The scum will just always come and, 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 and destroy it. But these were preserved and they didn't die a, na a natural death. You don't die when you are giving, giving birth and get preserved like that, or when you are eating, or many dinosaurs being found, they ran together into one place and they're buried with food in the mouth. Something cataclysmic happened. And uh, there's something they call geologic column where they're saying that uh, how life evolved. No, it is false. You know, the, the scientists uh, are all observing the same evidence whether they are born again or not. Those who are not born again, they are looking at the evidence and they are saying, there is no God. Those who are born again, they are looking at the evidence and saying, wow, there is a God. For example, you know, when the flood came, it buried um, animals in a certain sequence. Those animals that lived at the bottom of the sea, for example, the sea-dwelling animals, were buried first. Then after that, we have the amphibians were buried next, in the next column. Then you get the um, reptiles on the higher column. And then finally at the topmost, you get mammals. So someone who's not born again says, look, uh, this is how the life evolved. It started in the sea with, with, with these sea animals, then it turned into amphibians, then they turned to reptiles, then this turned into uh, mammals. No, 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 that's not the case. This burial sequence is as a result of three things. First, mobility. Secondly, the habitat. And thirdly, the intelligence. They are being buried according to where they were living. The sea, the, the, the animals that are dwelling at the bottom of the sea will be buried first. That is logical. Those which are intelligent enough to swim a little bit up can be found a little bit up. But after the sea animals, then it will come to the land animals. And then there are animals that could climb, uh, could go higher, you know. For example, birds. You don't expect birds to, to be buried with the fish down there. They would fly to the high, high, highest mountain. I mean, the, the, these are the, the last uh, uh, animals that you'd expect to die during the flood. And indeed, you find birds are at the topmost uh, part. Same to, to human beings, you know. So they are saying, oh, look, these are the last stages of evolution. No, we are looking at the same evidence. One is the person is terribly wrong thinking that this is an evidence of evolution. But let me tell you, the truth is, this is the evidence of a global flood, which we are supposed to look at and revere God. We are supposed to look at the fossils, go to the museums, look at those fossils, and let nobody tell you millions of years ago this evolved and it became this. No, no, no. Look at those fossils with awe and see the judgment of the Lord. That is very 
that is very logical that's what you, you see everywhere you go to to asia you go to india you go to africa you go to america every place you find the same sequence the same fossils buried in the same order imagine it is a worldwide thing it is a global thing it is an evidence that god left behind to remind humanity that this is what i did due to disobedience and by the way, the ark is a type of Christ. And everybody that was outside the ark was destroyed and buried. But those who were in the ark were taken up and they were saved. The global flood. No wonder Jesus would say, like the days of Noah, some will just be busy doing their own things, getting married, going for a job, looking for what. And then, all of a sudden, the trumpet is sounded and the rapture takes place. What a day it will be. So we are in the first uh, generation. A new generation has just come into the earth. Those who have uh, been saved from this flood. And there are eight people. Noah, his wife, and Noah has three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Each of the sons has a wife, a total of eight, in a family, saved and given instruction again to repopulate the earth. The same instruction that uh, Adam and Eve were given. And we saw a lot of changes. God changed their diet. They were told you no longer have to eat vegetables only. Now you must start eating meat. God told them now if someone kills uh, uh, someone else, that person needs to die. God will say from now there's a covenant I'm establishing with you. No more flood to come and cover the entire world. You can see the, the local flood. The rivers can burst their banks. There can be fl uh, floods. There can be tsunamis. But they will all be local. They can never cover the whole world. There's another change. Then God says, now you're going to have something beautiful again. Every time you look in the sky, you'll be seeing a rainbow. God called it a bow, my bow. You know, uh, God is saying, no more war, I've hung it up in the sky. So when you see the, the, the rains coming, don't get terrified. Don't be afraid. The flood is not going to come. But then something happened. Noah comes out offers a sacrifice. Remember he had some uh, clean animals. He was told to bring in clean and uh, uh, unclean animals uh, two by two. But the clean ones, seven by seven, because he would uh, use part of them to uh, offer a sacrifice. And they offered the sacrifice for the Lord that the Lord smelled nicely and he said he will no longer cast the ground. And he knew because man is able continually and even to date God knows how evil man is, but he says he's not cursing the ground, neither is he destroying it, because the Son, Jesus Christ, has now shed his blood to save us all. And when he comes back, he's going to take man, not in his own righteousness, but in the righteousness that is found through the blood of Jesus Christ that has purchased us, that has made us be righteous, that has clothed us with his own righteous robe, so that when he sees us, he doesn't see the wickedness that is in the heart from his youth. He's seeing the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. That is the righteousness that we have right now. This is Cover to Cover. I'll be right back. I'm David Adede. Hi, this is Cover to Cover. I am David Adede. Please subscribe to our channel. Also remember to click that bell so that you can be notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back to Cover to Cover, where we are going through uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 9, a uh, story of uh, uh, Noah immediately after the flood, and uh, we in uh, chapter and verse 20. And Noah be uh, began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk, and uh, became uncovered in his tent. As I was saying last time, uh, wine 
is not something you want to get uh, close to if you really want to be serious with the Lord. Not because it is sinful, but see, drunkenness is sin. The problem is that you never know at what point uh, you are getting drunk. You start normally in a very, uh, uh, honestly, very innocent way, but uh, somewhere down the line it just uh, gets stronger and you get more addicted and before you know it, you are drunk. And once you are drunk, then what happens now is what happens to you next. You get uncovered. No one gets drunk and you get some covered. You understand? Verse 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. God said that the heart of man is evil continually, even from his youth. And when the people who are saved, uh, are, their heart is no different. And now we're being introduced to one character called Ham. Ham is the son of Noah. Imagine he gets Noah drunk and uncovered, and he makes fun of it. Instead of covering the father, he goes and he tells his other brothers, the Shem and Japheth, this is really bad. It will turn out to be really bad. And sometimes you wonder um, uh, if it was really bad for harm to do this. Was it was there harm? Did harm do, do any harm <laughs> to Noah? Uh, is it really a bad thing for him to do? Yes, it was a bad thing for him to do, you know. If your spiritual parent or uh, an authority over you, whether it is a your, your biological parents, or your relative, or uh, someone in authority, whether it's a government, maybe someone like you in a, in a political authority or a civil authority over you, if they are uncovered, you are supposed to cover them. You are supposed to show them respect. You are not supposed to go talking about it. And you know, Miriam also did this. You remember in the Miriam, uh, the sister to, to Moses, Miriam and Aaron. One day Moses uh, messed and married uh, a Midianite uh, woman. And Miriam, they complained. And they said, Moses has married a Midianite woman. And it, it is true, Moses did something that was not right before the Lord. But guess what? The Lord came in the tent, the Bible says, and he called them and said, Miriam and Aaron, come out of the tent. And there they met with the Lord. And the Lord asked them, why did you speak against my servant? And Miriam got leprous. He got leprosy. She got leprosy right then. You see, God says that love covers a multitude of sin. And we are not in the business of looking who has done what, of looking at people's weaknesses. Nobody is perfect. And including yourself, including myself, so why should you look into weaknesses while well, you also have your weakness? You know, if we, we are just honest with ourselves, we'll know that we don't have any right to accuse anyone. Nobody should throw the first stone. But here, Ham is throwing it to the father. And he goes and discusses with the others. The other brothers, them, they cover, and they take something, a covering, and they don't want to face the father, so they go backwards, you know, uh, without looking, with the, with, with the clothing on their shoulder, they cover the father. Verse 23. But Shem took, uh, but Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both of their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces turned away and did not see their father's nakedness. Let me ask you a question. Do you cover the nakedness of your father? Verse 24. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, 
cast be canon a servant of servants he shall be wow i don't know no one knew about this but somehow we got to know and uh he curses canon now listen carefully harm was never cast because there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, narrative that all oh, ham was cast well ham uh, means hot or uh, some say black and uh, it is true most of ham's descendants uh, have stayed in um, uh, most areas of africa and they are darker people and um, this verse was used for many years to um, justify slavery where people would, uh, come from other continents and uh, subject uh, black people to slavery and they're saying they were cast and asked to be slaved nothing could be further from the truth harm was never cast it was canaan canaan is the uh, son of harm canaan is the grand son of noah and you know that canaan uh, mostly wiped out because as we shall see in the next chapter he is the father of the jebusites and the uh, Hivites and, and all the, the uh, Canaanites, you know, that God gave instruction that they should be destroyed because they are overly wicked. So, uh, a Canaan is, is cast here, and uh, I don't know why Noah casts the grandson instead of the son. Uh, I believe there's a, there's a divine um, re revelation that he might have had to it, or there could be something about Canaan that we are not told about. Remember, it is mentioned a little bit earlier. Is the first grandson not to be mentioned? Was it notorious or known for something specific? I don't know. But the Bible doesn't give us much detail, but it is making it clear that the curse is upon Canaan. Verse 26. And he said, that's now, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Verse 27. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of shame and may Canaan be his servant so uh, Noah is uh, going is pronouncing blessings and cursings here more or less like what uh, we will see uh, one day when uh, uh, Jacob will be will call uh, to 12 of his sons and will start to pronounce telling them what will be happening in their future we see a, a just a, a sl slight version of that right here when when noah is now talking to his son and is going to address uh, a three uh, generations he addresses uh, uh, the, the, the shem that's his son he addresses japheth that is his son and he addresses canaan that is his grandson. It doesn't address the father of Canaan who is Ham, you know. More or less like uh, uh, when uh, J J Jacob was 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 giving um, portions to the uh, sons. Then instead of Joseph, he did not talk about Joseph. Instead, he went and uh, and blessed the sons. Of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh, we shall see that when we get to, to the stories ahead in this uh, same book of Genesis. So uh, and Noah is uh, saying Canaan is cast, and as we saw, Canaan uh, is uh, mo mostly uh, the, the, the those people who are wiped out who are in the land of Canaan. You know, the land of Canaan. We'll come much into that when we get into the book of Exodus. And then uh, he says, Blessed be the Lord God of shame. Now, shame, shame is the most blessed of all the sons of Noah because uh, this is where the Messiah will come from. Actually, you know the, the word, those who hate to use, uh, it's called anti uh, semitism And from that, that word, uh, semitism is from the word shame. So if you are anti-Semitic, it means you are against uh, Shem, you are against Jews. So uh, Shem is the uh, father of the Jews, the Jewish nation. From Shem, as we will see in the next uh, chapter, in the next uh, 
uh, episode, we are going to see one of our, his son called uh, Faxad, who is going to be uh, a grandfather of, uh, of Abraham, from where now the Jewish nation will come from. So Shem is uh, holding a very special uh, place in the sight of God right here and in the sight of, of, of Noah. That's why Noah starts by him by saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Then he goes to another son called Japheth, verse 27. He says, May he dwell. You know, he says, May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. So Japheth is also blessed, but not as Shem. And uh, from Japheth, that's why we get a lot of the, the, the European people. We look into the details of their descendants. In our next program, you'll see uh, who, who dwelt where and uh, who is where currently. Though there's a lot of intermixing, but there's larger uh, groups that you could uh, uh, easily uh, trace the origins to these specific uh, three people, uh, Shem, uh, Japheth, and Ham. So um, uh, both uh, Shem and uh, Japheth are blessed and uh, Ham, uh, Canaan is uh, told that he will be his uh, servant, will be serving uh, with the, the two. So verse 20 say, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years. So all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. That is the only and the longest living person after the flood. Uh, a total of 900 and 50 years. Hmm. From there on, you'll see a decline in uh, the ages. In fact, if you look generally the trajectory from Adam, you see that the, the, the ages they, they keep on declining. But after the flood, there's a drastic drop whereby you will now see people living only less than 300 then less than 200 and eventually to just about 100 years as it is today. We shall be seeing more of this in our next program. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. I've been your host, David Adede, and you've been watching Cover to Cover. God bless you.